Right, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, something slightly different here. I thought we'd look at the EverDrive here on the N64. Um, I, I, previous to this, actually, I filmed um, yesterday a, a little bit of um, a, a mod, actually, to my N64 to get the display working properly here. And I thought it's not really a substantial enough video to put up on its own right, really. It's, it's too short, there's too little there. And it has been covered in other places. In fact, what I did is just searched in Google. Um, I was getting a problem where the display was quite washed out, it was quite white, um, you know, whites were like over bright. Now I've had that since I got this N64 and I just uh, initially put it down to perhaps needing, uh, you know, recapping. Uh, I had that in the back of my mind but then I revisited this yesterday because I wanted to test some ROMs out on here. And I'm going to run through and just show you some of these ROMs now. I thought that might be a little bit more interesting um, rather than just the, uh, the mod that I've done. Um, so the mod bit will be a bit later on in this video, um, but initially I'll just talk a little bit about some of these ROMs. Um, so I discovered that there's um, a version of the um, N64 that was sort of um, converted to like an arcade board. I think it was called Alex, Alec 64. Um, and I think there's something like 11 ROMs, there might be less, there might be 9, however many there are here. I think this is all of them bar one. Uh, I think there's one that's not been dumped. Um, but I thought I'll just quickly just show you these, you can see what they look like. Um, someone has converted these, um, I think they just, I don't know what they've done with the alt altered, I think they've done a patch, you know, some of the code there, um, to get them running on the um, EverDrive, and they work in emulators and things as well, so I'll just show you what these look like, um, and obviously there's been a mod done there to perhaps map the buttons to coin inputs and things, that might even, they might not even modify that, it might be because it's based on the N64 hardware that uh, the buttons are automatically mapped, I don't know, but you can see that's uh, a ruse call. Let's just turn that down and touch quite loud. So straight away there you can see um, it's making use of the um, extra RAM there, you know, the extra 4 meg uh, for you know, that higher resolution. That's really sharp. It's amazing how sharp that is. And uh, this is over S video. Um, and after having done the mod, which you'll see a bit later on, the, the colours and things are really good on this actually. Um, so I hit start. I think I put three coins in that. You can see this is like one of these fruit machine type uh, things. Can't get over how sharp it is. It's amazing actually on this video. I thought I was going to have to try and get um, a US version of the N64 to do an RGB mod, but um, I haven't got my um, S video working perfectly now. I'm amazed at how good it looks on this TV. And I don't think uh, I'm going to bother with an RGB N64. I might get one, one, one at some point in the future, but um, as you can see, that looks fantastic. Um, it really does. And it's great being able to play some of these arcade games on your N64. So, let's go back to the menu now, because I'm not going to spend too long on each one. Just bear with me. So, we'll take a look at the next one here, 11 beats. Now, my TV goes blue when I'm toggling between games and things. You can see the logo at the top, Alex64, so... This is quite good actually, I had a go with this yesterday, it's like a soccer game, it's quite cool. Uh, which is the credit book, I can't remember now. There it is. Hit start. Got to hit the right button here, I'm not sure what you hit. So it's, no, it's the start button. Yeah, it does vary between games, like I said, the buttons, you know, like the coin button and the start button, and some of the, the, the buttons for the actual game itself they vary completely, obviously, between the games, because these were obviously, like I said, based on a, an arcade machine. Um, but as you can see, this looks pretty sweet as well, actually. It's, it's not a bad uh, soccer game, this, actually. Now, I don't know, one, one thing I don't know is whether these any of these games have got, like, counterparts in the N64 library already. Um, maybe, you know, different... They might have been named differently. Um, they may well be the exact same games, but they've been, you know, sold to the, on the actual official N64, uh, you know, commercial side. I'm not sure. So, uh, yeah, but as you can see, that looks and sounds great. So, let's try the next one. So this is High Pie Paradise. And as you can see, it's pretty good, actually. The graphics are pretty sharp and stuff again. Um, I think this is probably using that additional RAM again, actually. I suspect maybe the, that additional RAM is built onto the uh, board. Now, with this one, I'm not sure how to control it. I'm not sure if this is one of the games that someone's um, managed to convert, but they've not done any modification for the controls because... Um, as you'll see, if you watch the little bubble in the middle, it's a countdown. It doesn't matter what button I press, and the controller doesn't do anything. At least I don't think it does, I can't seem to influence it at all. So that, I think this particular game, like I say, is not, uh, it's not been properly 
um, converter. It's, it, it'll run, but you can't play it. And just to show you, these are arcade versions. If you press, I think it's LB on most of these, you get the uh, test mode up that you would get on the arcade machine. So you're going to use display to test, switch test, etc. E prom test. Uh, let's exit out of that. Put credit in. So let's start the game. Again, looking very sharp there. Um, this is one of the games where I noticed the overbright problem you'll see later on. But it, it looks amazing, absolutely amazing. There's more N64 games with a sharp. So as you can see, it's uh, kind of uh, a bit like Tetris. There's another game that's very similar to this, actually, the Mario one, isn't there? Um, a Columns is a, another sort of example of a similar type of game. You're just going to get four fruits there, sort of in a joined up pattern, they don't need to be in a line, it can be in a square or a, an L shape or whatever. But as you can see, yeah that's working fine, it looks good, it's uh, another good game. Let's try the next one. So a magical Tetris challenge, let's give that a go. Added a few credits. Again that looks amazing. Um, Disney themed this, but it's got Capcom at the bottom, which is a bit weird. Uh, I think I've put credits in player too, haven't I? Because the credits are on the right side, there we go. Yeah, there's two credit buttons. Strangely enough, you can add a credit for player two on the player one controller. Let's go with Mickey, normal. I've skipped all that, but as you can see, it looks great, um, and it sounds great. I know the volume's a little bit low here, but I'm very impressed with these. They're, they're really good. For any Nintendo 64 fans, these are a must, really, because uh, it expands the library uh, quite a lot, you know. Because I don't think there's that many titles on the N64, really. I remember when I first got the Overdrive, I was kind of a bit disappointed, thinking, you know, that there weren't more games for it. Um, so these are certainly welcome. Anyway, you can see that's working and it looks and sounds great. So let's try the next one. That's worth pointing out. Um, just once or twice I found that you've got to switch the N64 off. If you just use the reset thing, go back to the menu, because it's left some of the registers of some of the chips and things in a certain state. You'll just get a black screen. Uh, I don't know, you know, that's a bug, probably a bug with the overdrive in terms of what it's initialising between resets. But uh, yeah, having reset this one properly, you know, I've booted it with the power on, off and on, it's okay. Uh, so yeah, lots of Japanese here, so I'm not really sure what's going on. Some sort of tile based thing, so. But that's working. Anyway, we'll try the next one. So the next one here is Star Soldier Vanishing Earth. Let's give that a go. Uh, I think this is a shmup, from what I remember. Now, I'm not sure if this is. Um, Another, you know, one of these games that has been ported to the N64 previously, you know, a commercial title. I'm not sure. <coughs> Post in the comments below if you know. Um, I do remember seeing a shmup on the N64. It may well be this game, I'm not sure. So I'll start a credit if I can. There we go. Select a ship. Yeah, it does look similar to the shmup I've played on the. N64 before this, so I'm not sure if this is the arcade version of the game, like I said, it was commercially uh, released or not. Still, it's pretty good, sounds good, looks good again. Let's take a look at the next one. So the next one here is the Super Real Mahong, let's give that a go. Probably not going to be able to play this because uh, with it being Mahong, I mean, I don't even know the rules, don't, don't understand the rules anyway. Um, and it's probably all going to be Japanese, I would think. I'll try and find the credit button there. Yeah, I think this is another one of these ones that's not playable because you can't find the credit button. None of the control. Oh, there we go. It's the D pad. Let's start again. Yeah, I'm not sure what the controls are here. Hit start. Oh, it seems to be working. Yeah, similar to that game we were looking at before, actually. That one 
was a long game as well. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, I'm not, not sure. Yeah, I think that move timed out, didn't it? Yeah, you see I'm getting the time countdown thing again there. Honestly not sure on the controls of that, but anyway, it does work to the point where you can see it. So the next one here is uh, Tower and Shaft. Uh, I think this one's, is this the one that was playing yesterday? I can't remember, let's have a look. Yeah, this is the one I played yesterday, it's quite, quite good fun actually. Um, it reminds me of a game that I remember uh, playing on the um, iPhone actually, I can't remember the name of the thing, was it Doodle Jump? Or something like that, yeah I think it is. It's a similar sort of thing, but you just all you do is you've got to jump, and, it's, and you can only jump in one in the direction you're running. You sort of walk from left to the right. When you reach the edge of the screen, you turn around. And depending on how long you hold the button down, it depends on how high you jump. Uh, and obviously, the aim is to get up to the top, try and collect things on the way. So that's actually quite cool. It can be quite difficult at, at times, though, especially when you start falling down. I think if you fall, the screen doesn't scroll back down again, so if you fall right down to the very bottom or off the bottom of the screen, that's when you lose a life. But as you can see, that's working as well. That's another cool game, welcome game, in the M64 library. The last one here of these arcade games is Vivid Dolls. So, um, yeah, this one's uh, quite good as well. The graphics are very nice and sharp, but it's uh, kind of a bit of a light porn game, I guess you could say, really. You know, it's, um, Reminiscent of things like strip poker and stuff that used to be able to get on the ST and the Amiga. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of also reminiscent of Quix, the arcade game there. If I put a credit in, I can work out how to do it. Huh? Hit start. I'm not going to show you too much here for obvious reasons because of uh, YouTube will probably go mental, I think. Someone's... Yeah, so you move your little thing around here and you draw lines and you try and jo join up. So, you know, make the picture visible, as you can see. I'll just go a little bit further down here. Oh, got hit. But yeah, it's very much like Quicks. Oh, damn. Interesting sound effects as well. But it works, anyway. Uh, so, it's another game in the collection. So the other thing I thought we'd have a quick look at while I'm here as well is the uh, floppy disk um, conversions as well. Someone's, uh, I, really, I really need to rename these because they've all, I think they've probably got the um, the codes, those NUD codes are probably the code that shipped on the car, you know, the product code, etc. So it's not immediately visible, of, you know, what, which one of these is which. I know from memory there's about four versions of Mario Paint, I think. But uh, yeah, the Nintendo 64 disk drive uh, system, you know, the uh, DD, whatever it's called, um, they were Japanese on the games, and someone's taken them and managed to convert them to run from the uh, from car, you know, from the EverDrive. So we'll just have a look at the first one. Um, I'm going to skip through these. I'm not going to show you them all. Um, I think there's 11 there from memory that have been done so far. So as you can see, we've got the title screen coming up here. I think this is the godlike one that I can't remember the name of. Um, you, can you control like a large yellow avatar. Um, let's see if I start it. This is the sort of game you might be able to work through and work out what to do because I did have a, a brief play yesterday and I can sort of understand what you've got to do. Uh, you know, can, for example, you can pick the little people up like that and drop them, uh, but you can also grab the land and pull it up like that. A bit like Populous, you know, change the, the, light, the height of the land. You can also jump as well, I think, to squash land down. Uh, land down, and you've got to be careful not to destroy the buildings. I'm not really sure what, what else you do on this. I only had a, a brief play on it yesterday, but uh, as you can see, that's working. And originally, this, like I said, this was a flop, one of the, the games from the floppy drive. So then, further down here, we've got um, some of the Mario paints. I think this is probably a Mario paint, if memory serves. <coughs> yeah, that's looking like Mario paint, isn't it? Um, and again, this was one of the ones when I first tested this yesterday when I had the brightness problem. The white was awful, you couldn't see anything, it was so over bright. Um, but yeah, it's not on that. As you can see, that's working. I'm not going to go in there, I really don't know what I'm doing. It's a draw, you know, it's a draw in the painting package basically.
as you can see, a SimCity uh, 64 here. So I think this was a you know a Japanese uh, disk drive game only. Um, it'd be good if someone could do a translation for this. Um, that might happen at some point in the future. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I mean everyone knows how to play SimCity. It's just the text and stuff. You don't really know what's what's being said on a lot of these screens and things unless you can read Japanese. As you can see, there's the more familiar sort of uh, interface to SimCity. So these last two here are both F0, uh, and you'll see this later on in the video actually, I, I use this to test after I've done the, uh, the mod. But these are really cool. I'm not sure what the difference was between these and the cartridge version of F064. Um, I, don't, I think they added extra tracks, there might be a track editor or something in there, I'm not sure. You might not be able to use the track editor because obviously you, you, know, you need some storage or something. I don't, honestly don't know. Um, but what I do know is this you know, this is the, the disk drive version. Um, converted to work on cards here and it's you know, fully functional. Um, not sure why it's split into two discs, two different discs, whether there's different tracks on the different um, ROMs there. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, it certainly works anyway. So before you see the mod that I did to this, um, there's just a couple of other ROMs I've been playing around here. Um, I'm not sure why, I've got two versions of Animal Crossing here. Uh, one of them is Animal Forest, which is the original Japanese version. Someone's partly translated that to English. Um, I think all of the main dialogue is done, but the sort of when you speak to like NPCs in little villages and things there in, in the town and stuff, they still you know they still sort of can you whatever is coming up. So um, that's only part done. But I'm just wondering what this one is. I've not tried that one there, Animal Crossing. I'll have a look at that later. Uh, yeah, Sin and Punishment. So, Sin and Punishment was a game that only came out in Japan. Um, but I've got, I mean, this is a proto folder. I don't think it is. I think this is the, someone did a conversion of it. Um, and I think it was perhaps based on the Wii version that came out. But as you can see at the bottom there, the text in English, normally that's Japanese. And if I hit start, the menu here in a minute should all come up in English. There you go. Um, so, this is a cracking game. If you've not played it before, you should certainly check it out. Um, I think I played first played the follow up actually on the um, uh, Wii Sun and Punishment 2. That was really good. Um, it's interesting, this game has apparently been rated as one of the best shoot, shoot em ups ever. Um, which I can believe actually. You first start playing this, you think, oh, it's a bit boring, there's not much to it. But as you get into it, um, it's pretty good. You know, you can move your character from the, to the sides here, as you can see. It's two different fire modes. You've got a lock on mode, which I'm using at the moment, you can just toggle between the enemy is targeted um, and it's quite good you know it's on rails shooter uh, it's the same with the Wii the Wii was on rails as well um, but really really good fun fun games cracking sound and music on it as well the other thing you can do with the EverDrive as well is run emulators there are a few different emulators they're, they're not brilliant but they're functional if I, I'll show you if I load uh, let's load that bottom one I think one of those runs in high res and one of them runs in low res um, but this is a port of Maine that someone's done, and they've just built in a bunch of ROMs here. Now, some of them, like 1942, they were, but there's no sound at all. Um, whereas others, like a fellow Donkey Kong, for example. Oh, shit, I selected the wrong ROM. Let's try that one anyway, see what it's like. Miss Pac Man. Oh, it's got sound. Let's see if we can start it. So, yeah, it's a bit blocky and stuff, but. That's probably about the same as the original was. The sound didn't sound quite right. The tone was off a little bit there. But uh, still, it's amazing being able to play some old main games on an N64. It's quite remarkable, really. Uh, now, the brightness and things look okay here. It's a bit dark, perhaps. Um, but this is the purpose, this is the reason for this video. I'll show you in a minute what I think um, needs doing, uh, or where there's a problem anyway. I'll show you an example of that in a minute. But uh, as you can see, that looks okay. Um, yeah, it's perhaps a bit bright at the top. Um, but it looks pretty sweet actually. So I'll just switch that off, let's just reset it. Yeah, so if you have a look at this game, this is one of these RKD Alec 64 conversions it's just over bright um, and it'll probably be more visible once you start the game look at the tiles there on the left just start this up it's a little bit loud though let me just turn it down so 
Yeah, it's looking over bright already. It's very sharp though. I mean, look at the whites there, they're awful. And if you watch the little tiles on the left hand side, I'll see if we can zoom a little bit, just so you can see a little bit closer. They're just like really white on the outside, especially when you've got yellows and things. If you just put that piece down and get another one, let's just get another one. Look at the banana, it's like you can hardly see the definition of the banana for how bright the background is. And those peaches there, look, they're really washed down and bright. So, doing a bit of research, uh, I think it's probably the S Video cable. Um, someone on a forum suggested you put um, you need a 75 ohm resistor between the, I think it's the luminance signal and, signal and ground. So I'm going to give that a go, I'll just show you the result in a minute. So I figured the easiest way to do this actually is just to do it on the underside of the motherboard here, because if I show you, um, show you the lead, the sealed, you can see um, I just tried to make an indentation there to get inside it, but it's glued together, so you can't get in there. Um, and on the other end, it's smouldered. So I mean, what I could do, I mean, I could have snipped the wire here, then work out which ones the luminance join them all up again, apart from the well, and join them all up, and from the luminance to the ground, put a 75 ohm resistor in series, and put a heat shrink over. It's a lot of messing around, and then I figured, well, it's only ever going to get used with that cable. Um, nothing else. This doesn't do RGB or anything like that. So there's no, I can't see any reason why not to stick a 75 ohm resistor from luminance to ground on the board. So I'll just get the screws that hold in the board in here now um, and just solder it on the underside um, of the connector here that's probably the easiest thing I think so I've got the board out now and as you can see underneath here you've got some markings you've got a C, G, must be the ground, yeah it is ground Y, luminance, V, I'm not sure what that is 5 volts, right, left um, C must be colour there's going to be sync somewhere, I'm not sure what the sync is Oh, it'll be a bit up here, S. So anyway, if I stick a 60, uh, sorry, 75 ohm resistor between the Y and the G, uh, I think that should do it. So I'll do that and just quickly reassemble. Well, I won't even reassemble it. I'll just power it all up and see, see see what effect that has, and then if it works, I'll reassemble it all. So just loosely reassembled there. Uh, I'll show you putting the screen. That's actually significantly better. Uh, let's see if we can start this. If you look at the text at the bottom, I don't know. Uh, it's just much, much, much clearer. It's not as washed out. Yeah, look at the yellows there now, those bananas. Um, let me start it and I'll zoom in a little bit. That's better, much better. Wow, that's way better. It's mega sharp as well, actually. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm reluctant to do that kind of mod actually to the system itself, but it's only ever going to be used with an S-Video cable. So unless there's an S-Video cable out there that's got the resistor in it, um, you do need to do this really. So I don't know, I'm, I'm comfortable doing it that way. I might just put a little uh, label or something underneath just to say it's got a 60, uh, 75 ohm resistor um, on there. I don't know. But as you can see, that's just like way better. If I zoom in on the, um, the tiles, have a look. Um, the colour difference now is noticeable, you know, between the, the yellow banana and the white box. It's probably not coming out very well on the camera, actually. It looks a bit bad on the viewfinder, but it's just not, nowhere near as overbright as it was on the whites. That's the strange thing, it was only on the whites. Yeah, that looks much better. That purple in the background is nowhere near as uh, oversaturated, you know, it's not as quiet as it was. Anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting. Thanks for watching. See you soon.